everyone. I have a quick general mobility flow for you today. This is great to do on maybe an active recovery day or really any day, maybe you're feeling a little stiff or your body is just craving some uh, feel good, gentler movement. You could also do it as part of an extended warm up or cool down for your workout. Now, anytime we do a general mobility flow, the three focus areas that I wanna hit shoulders, spine, and hips. Okay, so we'll touch on all of those. We're gonna start in a tabletop position with a cat-cow variation, get the spine moving. So I want you to spread out through your hands, hands under shoulders, knees under hips. We're long and neutral through the spine to start. Now, when we go into our cat and our cow, we're gonna initiate the movement with our tailbone, and then we'll move up and down the spine, okay? So I want you to inhale here to prepare, inhale through the nose, expanding through the rib cage gently. Now, as you start to slowly exhale out through the mouth, I want you to start to tuck your tailbone under and then working your way up the spine vertebrae by vertebrae we're going to round that spine up towards the ceiling letting the head hang down now inhale here directing your breath into that wide open mid back and as you exhale once again initiate it with your tailbone the tailbone rolls up towards the ceiling, lower, mid, upper spine come into this gentle extension stay for an inhale you know the drill on the exhale, start with your tailbone. So what we're doing by starting with the tailbone is we're really emphasizing lumbar mobility or mobility of the lower back. Stay for an inhale. Exhale. Coming into that gentle extension. Let's do one more like this. We inhale to prepare. Exhale out through the mouth slowly tailbone draws under we round the spine up to the ceiling filling the space between the shoulder blades inhale expand the rib cage into that mid back exhale slowly uncurl and now from here instead of coming to an extension we're just going to come to a neutral spine so length through the back of the neck let's do a little shoulder mobility now so i want us to start with the left hand actually so you're going to reach the left hand forward and then you're going to start to circle it back and around flipping the palm rotating within your shoulder joint so palm faces in towards midline when it's behind you and then just reverse it start to sweep it up and over and it faces in towards midline when it's forward and then you can lower it down to the floor with your right hand really press the mat away stay stable through the shoulder again we reach the left arm forward Without flaring open through the rib cage, stay connected through your core. We circle it back, keep it lifted. We're open through the chest. Reverse it back forward, lower it down. Just one more like this, and then we are going to add on. So when we add on, we'll reach our hips back, sitting on our heels, and we'll just sweep the other arm off the mat and overhead. Coming into a very gentle back bend. Okay, so we're going to add on. It starts the same. We reach the left arm forward. We flip the palm as we sweep it back now pause here we're going to push off our right hand as we do we're going to sit our bum on our heels left fingertips plant on the floor right arm sweeps up just a gentle back bend you're supported by this left arm let's reverse it uh, hips come off your heels right hand plants left arm circles back up and around twice more like this left arm reaches forward circle it without twisting through the spine then shift back and we sweep it up there can be a gentle twist here bring it back forward both hands plant and let's do that one more time left arm reaches up circle it back shift the bum to your heels now your right arm sweeps up left hand plants open through the front side of our body we're going to come back to tabletop both hands plant on the mat. All right, now we're gonna come into a thread the needle combo. Again, the left side is gonna start moving, all right? So we're gonna start with an open twist. So I want you to take your left elbow and start to pull it up towards the ceiling. We twist open to the left. Now we're gonna close the twist, bending into our right elbow, threading the left under the right. And I want you to bring your cheek all the way down to the mat. Now exhale here, brace through your core, really press down to the supporting right hand. And we're gonna take our right leg and we're gonna extend it up and back. Now let's just reverse it. We bring the knee back down, we press off our, left, or our right hand, and we bring the left elbow back up to the ceiling. Go slowly through this combo, let's do it again. We thread the needle, exhale, brace through your core, right leg kicks up and back slowly. It's a balance challenge here. We return the knee down. 
press it up, open twist. Thread the needle. So we got a lot going on here. Shoulders, core engagement, opening up through this right hip as we kick the legs straight, and rotation through that thoracic spine. One more time. Open twist. Thread the needle. Exhale first. Feel the engagement of your core, then kick the leg back. If you're not engaged through your core when you kick that leg back, you might topple over to the side and we don't want that. And then from here, let's just come back through center. Now we're gonna do that whole thing on the other side. So left side is gonna stabilize, press the mat away so we're stable through the shoulder, open through the chest. Right arm is going to reach forward and we are going to circle it up and around. Now when you rotate it, really think of rotating within the shoulder joint. Don't just rotate your palms, okay? It originates in the shoulders. Reach that arm back, brought across those collarbones, reverse it. Reach it forward and lower, twice more like this. One more isolating just the shoulder, and then we are going to add in that shift back sitting on our heels. And now we're gonna add on. So it's going to start the same, right arm reaches forward, right arm circles back. Reaching it back, we're gonna to start to shift our bum back to our heels, sit on your heels, right hand or fingertips plant, left arm is gonna sweep up and over. We can do a gentle twist open through the spine, leaning back, and then we just reverse it. Start to circle that right arm up as we shift back into that tabletop, both hands plant. Again, we reach the right arm forward, we circle it back, hips slide back, gentle back bend. You do not have to lean back very far at all, especially if it feels unsafe for your lower back, okay? One more. And we have that thread the needle combo coming up next. So let's pause in our tabletop. So we'll start with our open twist. We're gonna take our right elbow up to the ceiling as we twist open to the right. Now, as we close the twist, bend into your left arm, right weaves under left, bring your cheek to the mat. Exhale, feel your core engage, and then let's take the left leg, and we extend it up and back. We draw it back and go slowly, and we come through center into that open twist. Now, if you need a little more stability, take your stationary left hand and just step it out to the left a little bit, and that is gonna help when you come down onto the mat in this position. Twice more. Final time. Both knees down, bring it through center tabletop, cross at the ankles, shift your hips back, and now we're gonna come into some 90-90 hip work. Now, I don't know about you guys, but my hips need a little bit more of a warm up before coming into 90-90 hip work. It's very intense for me. So what I want you to do from your cross-legged position is just lean back. Hands can come to the mat. I like to point them out east to west. And we're just gonna plant our feet wide on the mat in front of us. And I just want you to windshield wipe from side to side. And you can let your hip lift off the mat at first. So knees down to one side, and then both knees tap to the other little twisting through the lower spine. Again, you can absolutely let your hips lift up as you do this. And now what we're gonna do coming up is all we're gonna do is stop allowing that opposite hip to lift up so the knees will not come all the way down to the floor unless you are super hypermobile through the hips. So let's do one more to each side like this. And then pause when the feet, with the feet planted. All right, let's start by, uh, we can just do the left side. So keep your right foot planted. Lift your left foot up. Bring the foot in towards your right foot and drop the left knee down. And then just reverse it. Pick it up, bring the foot wide, drop the knee in. 
and just keep moving like that. Now the range of motion, not gonna be as big as it just was because we are keeping both hips planted down on the floor. Just focusing on moving that thigh bone within the hip joint. Last time. And then just take it over to the right. So we drop it wide, pick it up, drop it in. Oh, that's limited. One more, wide, bring it in. And now let's come into some 90-90 hip work. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our left leg forward and we're gonna kick our right back. And our legs are at opposing 90 degree angles here. Now, this may be a little intense. Two options. One, take a pillow and sit it under your left hip to elevate your left hip. That can help. Second option, pull your heels in a little closer to you so your legs are kind of at opposing triangles instead of 90 degree angles. Now, from here, we're going to start by just leaning forward over this front shin and coming back up. So I like to bring my hands in front of it. And from here, you're going to just bend into the elbows. You're going to lean forward over this front left hip and then back off. Now your range of motion totally depends on your body. So do not worry if your movement isn't as big as mine. Yours might be way bigger than mine, okay? So use me as a guide for the general movement, but as far as range of motion goes, that is gonna differ body to body, and that's absolutely fine. Mobility work is all about controlling a range of motion, okay? So it's not forcing as big a range of motion as possible. It's about staying within the range of motion that you can control. Over time, will that range of motion get a little bigger, a little bigger, probably, if you stick with it. But we're not forcing our body into a position that it cannot move itself out of. All right, now, instead of leaning forward and back, what we're gonna do is focus in on this back right leg. We're gonna find internal rotation. So we're gonna pick the foot off of the mat. We'll keep the knee down, okay? So lean forward one last time, come up, and then I want you to pause. Now brace through your core. We're gonna internally rotate through the back hip. So that back right foot lifts off of the floor and lowers, it's probably very small. Now you're seeing my foot lift up and lower down, but I want you to focus on where the movement is originating. The hip joint, the thigh bone is internally rotating within that hip joint and lowering. So the foot just lifts as a result of the work that is happening within our hip joint. Now, if this is way too much, you might try walking your hands forward, even coming to your forearms. That can make it a little easier. Or again, try sitting on a pillow if you have a pillow just under this left hip, that can help a lot. So now we're going to put the two movements together that we were doing. As we internally rotate through this back hip joint, we are going to lean forward. So this back leg and our torso will kind of be moving as one unit. Give me three more internal isolations here. Two. Last one, and now lower the foot and pause. Now you can absolutely do it with your hands on the mat for support. If you are up for a challenge though, I want you to reach those arms out to the sides, okay? So we're gonna start to lean forward. As we do, we're internally rotating within that back hip. Woo, this is tough. As we come upright slightly with the torso, foot lands back on the floor. We lean it forward, internal rotation in the back hip. This front hip is getting love too, okay? I saw this mobility drill on a, um, an Instagram account I love. It's a physical therapist and he posts a bunch of great mobility drills. I'll link to him below in the video description if you're interested. I love his stuff. Three more. Last time. Woo, come up and now reach your arms forward. We're gonna swing this front leg with control forward and back. So first I want you to lift this right leg to a small hover, then start to swing it forward and rotate, coming into a cross-legged position. And then let's just reverse it. We lift the right leg up to a hover, rotate within the hip joint, swing it back to that starting 90-90 position. We lift it, we bring it forward. Now, is there a little leaning side to side through the torso to accommodate this movement? Absolutely. You wanna limit it though, so that we're not 
just rocking forward and back. So think of lifting and controlling within the hip joint, as little shifting of the rest of the body as possible, but is your upper body gonna be completely silent? No, probably not. All right, one last time. We swing it back, really reach it back, coming to that 90-90 position, so we're open through this hip at the back. Lift the leg off, swing it around. This time, instead of coming to a cross-legged position, plant the foot down. You're probably gonna have to tuck your left foot in a little closer to you. I want you to shift forward. We're gonna come up onto our knee and our foot in this kind of open lunge position. I want you to bring your hands to the mat on the inside of your right foot, and then we're gonna reach this left leg long so that we are in this lizard lunge position or this runner's lunge position. So we're gonna do a little combo here, okay? First, I want you to start by taking your right hand, reaching it up to the ceiling and twisting open to the right. So we're gonna kind of put shoulders, spine, and hips together here. Bring that hand back down to the mat. Now we're gonna to start to shift our hips back. We're gonna lift this right foot up and reach it to the ceiling so we're in a single leg down dog. Now I want you to roll open through the hips, so take your right hip, peel it open, bend your knee, pulling the heel in towards the bum. Now let's just reverse it. We're gonna straighten the leg as we pull the right hip down, squaring off through the hips. And then we shift forward towards a plank, stepping that right foot forward outside the hand. Let's do that combo again. So world's greatest stretch, it's called. We twist it open. We square it off. We press it back, reach the right leg up, three-legged dog. We peel the right hip open, bending the knee, heel in towards bum. We straighten the leg as we square off the hips. We shift it forward, stepping that foot forward. Let's do that one more time. Twist it open. Hand to the mat. Three like a down dog. Hip peels open, knee bends. Square off the hips. This time stay in your down dog. Plant the right foot down with the left. Pedal out the heels. I want you to shift forward into your plank. I want you to drop the knees down to a tabletop, cross at the ankles, sit your bum back, and we're gonna do that whole series on the other side. So we're gonna come into our 90-90 position. I need to turn to face the other direction. It's not necessary for you. This time, we are going to have our right leg forward and our left leg back. And remember those modifications you can take. You can put a pillow under your right hip to elevate it a little bit. That can help a lot if you're tight through the hips. You could also opt to pull the heels in towards your bum a little bit. So your triangles instead of 90 degree angles, that can also help. So once you're in the position, just make sure you're open through this back hip. So this leg is not creeping up like that. Keep the knee back. You can pull the heel in, but keep the knee back. And then we're gonna take our hands over this front shin. And from here, we're gonna start with the tilt forward and back. So we're just going to lean forward over this front leg, bending at the elbows, and then straighten backing off. So you should feel this in the outer hip on this right side, kind of like if we were coming into a half pigeon. We'll do the lean, we'll do the internal rotation of the back leg, and then we'll kind of put them together. You know the drill, we're just gonna repeat that flow we did on this side. We'll finish with a little bit of centered work, and then you are done. Now, especially when we get to the parts where we remove our hands from the mat, we gotta make sure we're engaging through our core here. Core stability is really important and is gonna tie into whatever other joint we're focusing on. All right, give me one more like this. Lean it forward, maybe get a little deeper. Back it off. And now let's focus on internally rotating in this back left hip joint. So we're gonna lift that left foot off of the mat and then lower it down. I want you to lift on an exhale, brace through the core, and then you should feel the muscles in here firing, okay? Because remember, we're seeing the foot lift up and down, but the foot is only lifting because what is going on within our hip joint, we're rotating that femur internally within the hip. It might be a tiny movement. If you are sinking forward as the foot comes up, then you're not isolating the movement within the hip joint, okay? I don't want you to compensate. So we will put the two movements together up next. You can absolutely keep hands on the mat for it if you need the support. If you're up for the challenge, though, we'll reach the arms side to side. And as our torso leans forward, we will do this internal rotation, and then we'll bring everything upright. Give me two more here, isolating the rotation. 
Last time. Okay, now if you're up for the challenge, arms reach side to side. We're gonna to start to lean forward over our front leg. As we do, we internally rotate in the back left side. And we come up. So it's like the torso and this back leg are moving as one unit. Woo! Keep your back knee down, that's important. Oh, this is challenging. Notice if this back knee is wanting to creep up. Mine definitely is. Again, we want to stay pretty open through this back leg, so it's true 90-90. And this movement, you might notice a bigger range of motion on one side versus the other. That is okay. Meet your body where it is. It's very normal to have differences left to right. So we're only leaning as far forward as this back leg can internally rotate. You're gonna give me three more. Last time. Ooh, feeling a little shaky. Come up right, and now let's reach both arms forward. We're going to lift and swing this back leg. So I want you to first lift this back left leg to a small hover. Now start to swing it around, and as you do, you rotate coming into a cross-legged position. And then we reverse it. Lift the leg, rotate, swing it back, and swing it all the way back so we come to the 90-90. Lift it, small hover forward and rotate twice more i want you to think first lift the leg to a hover then you can lean if needed okay so first hover oh i had to lean a little bit then swing it forward and back. All right, this time we swing it forward a little different. You lift, bring it forward, just plant the foot down, take your right heel pulled into your bum a little bit, and then let's shift forward coming up onto that back knee. Hands are gonna come to the mat on the inside of this front left foot, and then we're gonna step our right leg back. So we're gonna come into that world's greatest single leg down dog combo. Let's start by taking our left arm up to the ceiling, twist open to the left. Square the chest off, hands plant. Now we start to shift the hips up and back, left leg up to the ceiling. Peel the left hip open on top of right, bend the knee, heel towards bum. Straighten the leg out as you square off the hips, pulling that left hip down in line with the right. We shift forward, pulling the left foot forward, stepping the foot to the floor twice more. We twist open and close it. Three-legged dog. Open through the hips, bend the knee. Straighten the legs, square the hips. And this time, I want you to just lower your left foot down to the mat. So we're in downward dog. Pedal out the heels a little bit. We're just going to finish up class with a quick roll up to stand. We'll inchworm back out to this position. We'll do it a couple times. So settling your heels down, legs straight. I want you to walk your hands in towards your feet. Vertebrae by vertebrae, we're gonna roll up to stand as you inhale, arms sweep up overhead. Exhale, lower the arms. Nod the chin, vertebrae by vertebrae, forward fold. Walk yourself out to a high plank position. And then reach those hips up, down dog. From here, let's inchworm our hands in towards our feet. Articulate the spine up to stand. Inhale, arms up. Release the arms. Knob the chin. Vertebrae by vertebrae, forward fold. Walk your hands out to a plank. Final time here. Lift them up to down dog pause. Press your chest towards your thighs. Now walk your hands in towards your feet. This is where we finish. 
And one final time, I want this to be your slowest yet. Vertebrae by vertebrae. We stack the spine up tall. We inhale, the arms reach up overhead. Big inhale. Rise up onto your tippy toes. Exhale, heels down, release. Let it go. That is your class. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope your body is feeling good and energized after that. If you enjoyed class, be sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to my channel. I post new workouts here for free every Monday with additional classes available to Patreon members. Um, I have some more mobility classes here for free up on YouTube. And then I have a ton more on Patreon. All the info you need is at patreon.com slash Nicole Pierce. I'll see you guys next time. Mm -hmm.